Now, from disrespecting pedestrians to disregarding speed limits, electric scooters are wreaking havoc on our roads. It sparked a police crackdown after too many joyrides sadly turned fatal. <laughs> jumped on the footpath and he just narrowly missed all of us. A rogue e-scooter rider has ploughed into an 11-year-old boy. He didn't even say sorry to me, he just like ran. An e-scooter coming up behind fast is a bit like a truck passing really fast when you're driving on a freeway. It's seriously scary. A great new way to explore the city or a hazardous nuisance. It's been three weeks since e-scooters rolled into Melbourne, part of a year-long trial. But already that's been thrown a little off balance by a few rogue riders. Being old, I don't always hear them coming, you know, and I'm a bit frightened I'll be run over. I think they're awful and I think they should go. Lunchtime in Melbourne's CBD and we're hard-pressed to find a rider who isn't breaking the rules. From overloaded scooters to people not wearing helmets and this man on a private e-scooter, most of which are only allowed on private property in Victoria. Can we have a quick chat with you about your scooter? Do you realise you're breaking the law by riding it like that on the footpath? You've got no helmet on? He isn't phased when he emerges minutes later. You can't be riding on the footpath, you're going to bowl someone over. And his day's about to go from bad to worse. Also catching the attention of passing police. Uh, you don't have a helmet on and these are uh, unregistered motor vehicles. Have you got any idea on you today? As he's speaking with officers, two rule-breaking tradies zoom past. Are you guys having a ride too without a helmet? <laughs> uh... The cops have just pulled this guy over, so... Yeah, I don't want to be video camera. Okay. Sorry, thank you. Do you know you can't be riding on the footpath here? Yeah, I'm just going. To, You've got no helmet either. Yeah. Where are you going? Uh, I'm just going to uh, finish each day. You know you can't ride these on the footpath? Yeah, cheers, mate. You know you can't ride them with two people on there? Oh, can't we? The police will find you. Oh, crap. Yeah. Yeah. These hooligans also catch the attention of police, speeding away before officers catch up with them. It's this blatant disregard for road rules that's got Ben Rossiter seeing red. We've been astounded at the number of e-scooters illegally riding on footpaths. We were told they wouldn't, and they are. Ben's from Victoria Walks, which advocates for pedestrians. For uh, elderly people, people with disability, or families with young children, being hit by e-scooters can have drastic impacts. And it already has. This elderly woman was hospitalised after being bowled over by two kids. And how about this man going for a peak hour five kilometre joyride on the East Link Freeway through a tunnel before being cornered by an incident response team. And it's not only e-scooter riders playing Russian roulette, this man takes it to a whole new level, barrelling down the middle of a busy road on an electric skateboard. We're seeing e-scooter injuries really on a daily basis. Uh, it's a new addition to our trauma workload. Associate Professor Mark Putland is Director of Emergency Medicine at the Royal Melbourne Hospital. A lot of them are minor injuries, uh, scrapes and cuts, broken wrists, um, that kind of thing, but some actually pretty major and catastrophic injuries, nasty head injuries. You imagine knocking out all of your teeth and cutting your lips up, that's a, that's a big thing for a person to come back from. In recent weeks, e-scooter riders have tragically died in Melbourne and Perth. And your head can hit the ground really hard. Brain injuries don't heal. You can heal bone injuries, you can heal skin, you can heal a lot of things. We, we can't really fix brain injuries. I think they're good, but they could be dangerous, to be honest with you. It's my first day driving today, and I actually nearly crashed into a couple of people because they're not really wary of what's actually going on. What do you think of the rules? Are they a bit confusing? what you can and can't do with him? Yes, because I, I think I was literally talking with him on the way here, like, am I meant to ride on this footpath, am I not meant to ride on the footpath, am I meant to go with the road? Adding to the confusion, different road rules depending on where you live. The Queensland government's just announced a crackdown on what it calls cowboy riders, slashing the footpath speed limit by half and vowing to make it illegal to drink and ride. Now get <laughs> Back in Victoria, police have launched a crackdown on rogue riders. Well, I'm doing the right thing. No, no, you're not. Let me tell you, they're illegal. 
so too has scooter provider Lime. We will ban riders, we will fine riders as well. Not a great look then that a company contracted to maintain its scooters was also caught flouting the rules. It says that the whole e-scooter trial doesn't really care about walkers. With so many doing the wrong thing, what happens if someone gets hurt? Both companies part of the Victorian trial have third-party insurance covering riders and anyone they injure. But there's a very big but. More often than not, chances are the policy will be voided. Tony Carbone is one of the country's leading personal injury lawyers. The innocent third person that's hit by a scooter is at the mercy of the person riding the scooter, not breaking the rental agreement. If they break any of those rules, the policy becomes void and they're not covered. Starkly different to the system that protects anyone hit by a car. Due to the um, negligent driving or signs intoxicated or under the influence of drugs, the innocent third party is covered at all times. I think the kids love them, but maybe they're not for everybody.